Good morning. Let's begin our service this morning by singing hymn number 422. Grace for today, O love divine, thee to obey and love alone. Losing the mortal will in thine, find we a joy before unknown. Hymn number 422. scriptural this morning will be given by Bruce from Plainfield. 1 Corinthians. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thanketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, 
these three, but the greatest of these is charity. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love over all and all. <clears throat> Let's now sing hymn number 105. Help us to help each other, Lord, each other's cross to bear. Let each his friendly aid afford and feel his brother's care. Hymn number 105.
welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our round table discussion. And we had a really good one this morning. So if you missed it, please log on to our website, plainfieldcs.com, where you will find it recorded. Also on Sundays at 11 a.m., we have a Sunday school for children. And that Sunday school is, is conducted via teleconference. So if you don't live in the area and have a child who would like to attend the Sunday school, please call us. We'll give you the teleconference number, and your child will be most welcome. Every Wednesday evening at 8.15, we have a testimony meeting where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our services, we have a nursery available for the very young ones. You can find us not only here in Plainfield, New Jersey, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com. We have a channel on YouTube and you can find us on SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our services either on our website, on YouTube, or via a teleconference number that we provide. <clears throat> Very good article featured on the cover page of our website is an article by Neil Kensington Adam entitled, Overcoming Fatigue. So if you've ever had a problem feeling tired, I recommend this article, Overcoming Fatigue, by Neil Kensington Adam. Everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now, we will have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained from studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Nancy from New Jersey. Page 660, Kidney Disease and Eye Trouble Heal. Early in 1904, I was teaching in a private boarding school. I was a very unhappy, discontented woman. I had kidney disease besides sore eyes, and my general health was very bad. The doctor said that the climate did not suit me and that I certainly should have a change. The best thing, he said, was to go back to France, my own country but I did not like to leave the school, so I struggled on until July, when we went traveling for a month. But I came home worse than ever. I had a lot of worry, one disappointment after another, and I often thought that life was not worth living. In September 1904, we heard for the first time of Christian science through a girl who was attending our boarding school and who was healed through Christian science treatment. We bought the textbook, Science and Health, with Key to the Scriptures by Mrs. Eddy, and what a revelation it was and is to us. It is indeed the fountain of truth. I had read Science and Health but a very short time when I took off my glasses, began to sleep well, and soon found myself well in mind and body. Besides this, it had brought harmony into our school, where there had been discord, and everything has changed for the better. I cannot describe the happiness that has come to me through Christian science. I can only exclaim with the psalmist, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and may God bless Mrs. Eddy. My one aim now is to live Christian science not in words only, but in deeds, loving God more 
and my neighbor as myself, and following meekly and obediently all our leader's teachings. Words cannot express my gratitude to Mrs. Eddy for Christian Science. S.A.K. Vancouver, British Columbia. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 10 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, love. The golden text is from 1 John. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. The responsive reading is from Psalms. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works! and thy thoughts are very deep. Carol from New Jersey will read from the Bible. I will read from the Bible, Psalms. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. <clears throat> oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Isaiah. I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. For he said, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. Romans. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Second Samuel. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant, whose name was Ziba. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. 
And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Makir, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Makir, the son of Amiel from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant, that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Now therefore, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread alway at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table. Ephesians Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. 1 John If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. Second Peter Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Day Day from Georgia will now read. 
Science and Health with Key to the Scripture by Mary Baker Eddy. Love one another, First John, is the most simple and profound counsel of the inspired writer. Spiritual living and blessedness are the only evidences by which we can recognize true existence and feel the unspeakable peace which comes from an all-absorbing spiritual love. The good in human affections must have ascendancy over the evil and the spiritual over the animal, or happiness will never be won. The attainment of this celestial condition would improve our progeny, diminish crime, and give higher aims to ambition. Every valley of sin must be exalted, and every mountain of selfishness be brought low, that the highway of our God may be prepared in science. God gives the lesser idea of himself for a link to the greater, and in return, the higher always protects the lower. The rich in spirit help the poor in one grand brotherhood, all having the same principle or father. And blessed is that man who seeth his brother's need and supplieth it, seeking his own in another's good. Love giveth to the least spiritual idea might, immortality, and goodness, which shine through all as the blossom shines through the bud. All the varied expressions of God reflect health, holiness, immortality, infinite life, truth, and love. Your influence for good depends upon the weight you throw into the right scale. The good you do and embody gives you the only power obtainable. We walk in the footsteps of truth and love by following the example of our master in the understanding of divine metaphysics. Christianity is the basis of true healing. Whatever holds human thought in line with unself love receives directly the divine power. When we realize that there is one mind, the divine law of loving our neighbor as ourselves is unfolded. Whereas a belief in many ruling minds hinders man's normal drift towards the one mind, one God, and leads human thought into opposite channels where selfishness reigns. Selfishness tips the beam of human existence towards the side of error not towards truth. Denial of the oneness of mind throws our weight into the scale, not of spirit, God, good, but of matter. When we fully understand our relation to the divine, we can have no other mind but his, no other love, wisdom, or truth, no other sense of life, and no consciousness of the existence of matter or error. People go into ecstasies over the sense of a corporeal Jehovah, but with scarcely a spark of love in their hearts. Yet God is love, and without love, God, immortality cannot appear. Self-love is more opaque than a solid body, in patient obedience to a patient God, let us labor to dissolve with the universal solvent of love the adamant of error, self-will, self-justification, and self-love, which wars against spirituality and is the law of sin and death. The physician who lacks sympathy for his fellow being is sufficient in human affection, and we have the apostolic warrant for asking, He that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God 
whom he hath not seen. Not having this spiritual affection, the physician lacks the faith in the divine mind and has not the recognition of infinite love, which alone confers the healing power. Such so-called scientists will strain out gnats while they swallow the camels of bigoted pedantry. If we would open their prison doors for the sick, we must first learn to bind up the brokenhearted. If we would heal by the Spirit, we must not hide the talent of spiritual healing under the napkin of its form, nor bury the morale of Christian science in the grave clothes of its letter. The tender word and Christian encouragement of an invalid, pitiful patience with his fears and the removal of them, are better than hecatombs of gushing theories, stereotyped borrowed speeches, and the doling of arguments which are but so many parodies on legitimate Christian science, aflamed with divine love. Human affection is not poured forth vainly, even though it meet no return. Love enriches the nature, enlarging, and purifying, and elevating it. The wintry blasts of earth may uproot the flowers of affection, and scatter them to the wind. But this severance of fleshly ties serves to unite thought more closely to God, for love supports the struggling heart until it ceases to sigh over the world and begins to unfold its wings for heaven. Let unselfishness, goodness, mercy, justice, health, Holiness, love, the kingdom of heaven, reign within us, and sin, disease, and death will diminish until they finally disappear. My weary hope tries to realize that happy day when man shall recognize the science of Christ and love his neighbor as himself when he shall realize God's omnipotence and the healing power of the divine love in what it has done and is doing for mankind. The promises will be fulfilled. The time for the reappearing of the divine healing is throughout all time, and whosoever layeth his earthly all on the altar of divine science drinketh of Christ's cup now and is endued with the spirit and power of Christian healing. We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world.
Let's now sing hymn number 31. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Brood o'er us with thy sheltering wing, neath which our spirits blend like brother birds that soar and sing and on the same branch bend. The arrow that doth wound the dove darts not from those who watch and love. Hymn number 31.
with you the God of greatness simply love someone like me and how could you so pure and perfect know my faults yet meet my needs I'll never know or understand just what you see in me my mind is amazed to think your plan includes me in your mercy it must be must be you keep turning my curses into blessings that's your love and nothing your love and nothing less if I could give my everything it wouldn't be enough for every good and perfect gift is more than I deserve it must be love Let's now sing hymn number 374. We thank thee and we bless thee, O Father of us all, that e'en before we ask thee, thou hearest thy children's call. We praise thee for thy goodness and tender constant care. We thank thee, Father, Mother, that thou hast heard our prayer. Hymn number 374.
read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, third chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth, matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal, matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Amen.